What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Today, I'm talking about the three phases of storytelling when doing your estimates to help you frame your estimates in a way that maximizes time, increases attention, and builds value. Tune in starting now. Contractors all over the world are wanting more, more time, more freedom, more impact. The way we do this is through implementing systems, processes, standards. Welcome to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Here we hit business strategy, coaching, mindset, motivation, the tools you need for success. So strap in, listen up, and get ready to grow on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. What's up guys, ready to give some value to you. I went out and did some estimates yesterday. Uh, always good to get out. I mean, it's, you know, somebody wrote uh, this, I read some blog about it, but it's like, you know, doing painting estimates is like treasure hunting. And if you're not feeling that when you're going to an estimate, you're doing it wrong, that's exactly what it is. You never know what you're gonna get. Some people play the lottery, uh, you know, I think going to a painting estimate is just as fun. You get just as much of a rush of excitement, not knowing what you're going to get into, not knowing the value of the sale, not knowing how it's going to propel your business, not knowing who you're going to meet. So the variety is so cool in this business and in any trade. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what I learned and kind of the overarching principle of what I want you to take away from this. Uh, so I did three estimates yesterday. The first estimate um, really opened my eyes to how important storytelling is. And I think we get caught up in estimates and maybe we don't um, really feel like people want to hear our story or want to hear our process or want to kind of like really just shy away from that if they give us you know, feedback that maybe makes it seem like they're not interested or they don't want to hear it. But for some reason yesterday, I was super talkative. Uh, I don't know. I just was like in a good mood and um, me and the guy got along, uh, you know, it was a two story home exterior house. So me and the guy got along and it was just one of those things where I wanted to really emphasize um, our process, our story. So it's important though, when you do this and, and you guys know that I'm all about, um, the 595 rule, spend 5% of your time working up the price, 95% of your time building a relationship. And, you know, in that 95%, you know, I have to make sure that number one, I'm giving them what they asked for, right? So it's important to them to know the process. And I always frame it in a way that, gets them ready for what I'm going to talk about so they know to start listening. So, of course, like whenever you do an estimate, you know, they're excited. They want to kind of just tell you what's going on. And if you don't do uh, the what's the story question, you're missing out because it kind of just gives them the floor. So I say, what's the story? You know, you know, why are we here today? What, what was your thoughts on uh, this project? And just let them kind of ramble about what they want done. You're going to uncover some things that are important to them. You're going to pick up some things that are going to be good for conversation later in the sale. And then it gets into, you know, letting them finish up. And then it's like, all right, well, I'm the expert. So now it's my turn. You know, um, you're not saying that you're thinking that. So the first thing is, you know, you want to really just address, you know, any concerns off the bat, you know, cracking, rusting, you know, anything that's like, you know, super cosmetic or one of the main issues. Right. So and, and the reason why we're doing that is because, you know, everybody has a thing on their project that they just want to make sure gets done. It's, it's, it's never fails. There's always that one thing. So I try to identify that early and then squash it. So it's not lingering because if someone has one thing and it doesn't get addressed early on in the conversation. What are they thinking about the whole time? Are they going to get to the point where they fill the cracks? Are they going to get to that? So on. anyway, so once we get through that, I always kind of just like hit the reset button and you really got to get good at that in dialogue. It's like hitting a reset button on the conversation because I want to align attention. Our attention span is as low as it's ever been as humans. So it's important to help people understand what to expect so they know when to listen. You know, my wife gets on my case sometimes where we'll be having a conversation and then I'll drift away from the conversation. Maybe I'm, you know, on my phone doing something or I'm kind of just, you know, not paying attention. And then she'll start talking and then I'll miss the first part of what she said. And she'll go, are you listening? I'll be like, what? Wait, what'd you say? And it's like, 
it's not that I wasn't listening. I heard her talk, but my focus wasn't there. And it's because obviously in that moment, she didn't prepare me. You know, I, I joke around with her. I say, you know, hey, it'd be good if you just gave me like an alert and said, hey, I'm getting ready to tell you something important. And then boom, my attention's right there. You know, but it, it obviously I know there's a lot of husbands out there that can agree with me. Sometimes it's always hard to keep up with uh, all those conversations at all times. So focus on focus as much as you can husbands out there. But anyway, when it comes to your customer listening to you, it's important for you to understand uh, that, you know, there's a lot going on in their head. So I always say, all right, so is it OK with you if I go over our process? Right. And then if, what are they going to say? No, please don't. <laughs> but they're always going to say yes. But the reason I'm doing it is because I want them to listen. I want their focus. I want their attention because these details are what's going to make the difference in the sale. So it's going to start off like this. Hey, Mr. Jones, I just want to inform you that the first thing that we're going to do is address this major issue that you outlined to me. But let me tell you about our process and what makes us different. The first thing we do when we get here is you know, we begin the prep work on your house. That includes putting plastic on your windows, sealing all the cracks. We're actually going to recalk these windows. You see that there? You pointed it out to me. We're actually going to create a new line around that window to make sure uh, it's to our standard. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to put a primer on your house and we're going to trench the perimeter and we're going to ensure that this project is done with utmost integrity. Um, in turn, so I just want you guys to understand that as I'm doing this, you know, I'm focusing on the experience he's getting. And this is a project related experience. Okay. So you guys have heard me say, well, don't focus on the project. Focusing on the project is just, you know, randomly pointing things out and, and with no direction. What I'm doing is I'm breaking up my dialogue into segments. So the first thing is the project related experience. That's why we're different. Then I get into the people related experience, right? So then I start to transition into, and let me tell you about my team. So with that, it's going to be like, Hey, you know, one thing that separates us from our competition is that all of our guys are W2. What does that mean? Well, they're loyal. They wear our brand. They understand our standard. They represent our company. How does that affect you in any way? Well, the alternative is, is some companies use subcontractors. Now I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but we chose to use employees because we've built long-term relationships with our guys and you know we have complete control over their schedule and the timing and pretty much know who we're going to be sending to your job to handle each individual task now those of you who are using subcontractors you can easily flip this dialogue and you know come up with your own value points about why subcontractors are better because it's an equal argument okay i'm obviously going to favor employees because i have employees but again, what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm talking about the people and the, and the process, right? So then at that point I say, okay, well, typically you're going to get a project manager on site and we don't work with any less than three guys on the job. Again, why is that important to you? Well, because you don't want us to linger, you know, you want this job done efficiently and consistently. One other thing that you're going to love about us is that we don't leave jobs and, you know, come back. If we start your job, we're not leaving until it's finished. So you won't have a half painted house. Um, and what I'm doing is, is, you know, obviously I know that there's particular situations that could happen, you know, from poor workmanship. And I'm trying to alleviate concerns. If I could write a, a list of all the concerns that a customer has, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to squash those concerns. You know, I'm trying to outline every single thing that we do to combat a potential concern. So a potential concern could be, well, what if they don't work fully? Uh, or what if they work a, a couple of days and then they leave and I have plastic and a half painted house for a week? You know, or what if, you know, um, they don't get back to me after, you know, I, I sign and place a deposit. So, you know, I'm very you know, conscious to emphasize, you know, when you, uh, you know, if you decide to move forward with us, it's usually a three week turnaround time. You'll get a notification letting you know your start date. Like, so again, like your focus should be identifying concerns and then addressing those concerns in your dialogue. So again, going back to kind of the process here, the segment is we have the project related process. So explaining what our process is, you know, so they have a good indication of what they're paying for. That's most important, identifying what it is that you're giving them in exchange for 
money. So the value of which they're getting project related, but this is your variable. I tell you guys this all the time. There's no one that has the same people process as you. There could be painting companies in my area that do the same thing. You know, if they're, if they're good at what they do, they probably do, but no one has Shamel. No one has Chris. No one has Ray. No one has Julio. No one has, you know, Michael and, and, and you know, these guys, my team, right? No one has those. So of course I'm going to use those as separating factors. So, you know, again, going back to the people related process. So I said, typically if a project manager, you know, on a job like this, I'll probably send Shamel. He's been in, you know, with us for, you know, five years now, he's one of our best. And the reason why is because he's really good at working on, um, houses with brand new roofs. He's an expert spraying technician, which means that when he sprays your soffits, you have no concern of whether or not overspray is going to get on the roof. Right. So again, I want you guys to understand this and maybe you're listening to this from the customer perspective and you're thinking, actually, you know, as a customer, I would find that valuable. You know, that's information that I otherwise wouldn't know. So when I'm making my decision, I'm thinking, well, Tanner mentioned to me that he has someone that's really good at spraying soffits and we have a new roof. So you know, that's another notch on the list of pay Tanner's company versus the competition who didn't tell me anything other than what they're going to do, how they're going to do it and the price. But the more detail I go in, that's going to create more of a case for me to be the leader in this competition of who's going to get the job. So again, what I'm trying to emphasize to you is that all of the information that I'm giving you is just examples of how in depth you should be going when it comes to explaining your processes. It's very important to set the stage and then put on a play, right? So every time you segment into a new piece of val valuable information, you need to prepare the customer for that, right? So, all right, cool. So now I kind of covered our, uh, you know, our, our, process when it comes to actually preparing and painting your house. Now, I just briefly want to tell you kind of what to expect when it comes to the team, right? So that's kind of how you would segue into talking about, you know, your people. And you can always work in that question that I like, hey, have you just curious, have you ever hired a painting company before? So chances are, if they've had a negative experience, it really probably wasn't about the quality of the, the work. It was more so the quality of the team. And if I were you, I would maybe use that as a way to segment into why your team's different, you know, different things that you guys have in place. If someone says, yeah, but they were, they were late a lot. I'll always say, Hey, just so you know, we kind of have an accountability system. Everyone clocks in from their phone. I know. Can you believe technology nowadays? It's amazing. Uh, but what that does is it just makes sure we're keeping tabs on our guys, making sure they're keeping our promises that we're making today. Um, so those are the two phases, you know, of explaining processes. The third phase of, you know, storytelling is our company story. So if I were to break this up, we have phase one talking about the project phase two, we have talking about the team and then phase three talking about our story, our reputation, our values. And I don't think enough of you are doing that. I really don't. I don't think that you are making it a focus because again, people typically like to buy from who they like people typically like people that are similar to them. So if you kind of pulled your, you know, your customer base, you would probably identify that anyone that is your customer generally has the same values as you. As even if you, you guys maybe buy, buy with the same mentality, you know, you both value value. If you're providing value as a company, you're aligning with customers that, you know, identify with that. They want to pay for a valuable service. So, you know, when it comes to telling your story, this is your opportunity to align your customer in a way that's intrinsic. So you could start off and I think you should keep it brief. Don't sit there for an hour talking about how you, you, you made it. I mean, I think you can just keep it brief. You know, for me, I'll say, you know, just so you know, we've been in business now for six years. Um, this is a cool stat. We, we paint about 250 homes per year. Uh, we have three crews now. We're so excited. We, we just actually created our third crew uh, earlier this year. And, you know, one thing that's important to us is creating a family environment. We have customers that really, you know, they tell me that they're going to miss the team. And as a business owner, you know, for me, that's so valuable because although we paint, I believe that we're a customer service company first. 
you know, there's some things that we have in place to make you feel like your family and like this home is our home. We're your guests, you know, and we have some processes in place to make sure the little details that you're telling me, kind of like how your plants are really important to you and how maybe you had a poor experience that we're going to make sure that that information gets handed to the right people. So when they show up on the first day of the job, you're not reiterating these things. It's already taken care of. We want to give you kind of like a white glove experience. And that's what's kept us in business for so long. You know, it's funny. I started this business when, you know, I didn't even know this was what I was going to do. I was just trying to help my dad, uh, you know, get off his, you know, get off, get on his feet. And, I turned it into my career and I love it. You know, I, I started off painting myself and, uh, you know, turned it into, you know, a business that serves many, you know, we have 12 great employees, you know, they have, they're, most of them are family, family men. And, you know, they take a lot of pride in what they do. They've made this their career. Um, and you're going to feel that when they're working on your home. And, you know, again, as I'm explaining this to you, I want you to kind of, ho hopefully you just had a, a visual image. It's like, think about it. Is that like, if you're, if you're someone that takes pride in where you place your money and obviously there's an expectation of quality work, but what are you investing in as a buyer? You know? And I think the more that we tell our story, the better chance we have at winning over the hearts of our customers. Now, there's two ways to tell a story. You can tell it with manipulation or you could tell it with authenticity. If you live these values and you believe in these values and you realize these values in all that you do, telling the story is easy and it'll resonate. But if you don't, you can tell the story and you may win someone over and they will believe you, but it will not last. So focus on your value system in your company. If you're going to tell the story and you're going to make promises, make them wholeheartedly see to it that they get fulfilled, even if it costs you money, you know, in the long run, but your value system is what is going to bring you to the business promise land, which is what I believe endless success, endless referrals, endless business fruits during storms, you know, in any economy, it doesn't matter. So so those are the three segments of storytelling, you know, and I think it really opened my eyes yesterday because I was like, man, you know, the customer seemed genuinely interested at each phase. He asked questions after each phase, like, you know, once I was going over the process of the production, he had good questions and I was able to ask, you know, good answers. Like I told him that we were going to, you know, trench the perimeter um, of the house and he was like, oh, that's great. You know, you know, it's funny, you know, I was always thinking about that. Like, are they going to be able to get the, the dirt? you know, that's risen above the foundation. I mean, am I going to have to do that? And, you know, so because I said that it opened up something that he could have questioned. And then with the process of the people, he said, you know, he was, he was, um, excited to know that I used employees because he had a bad experience with a company locally that, you know, just hired a, a subcontractor and it was hard to get in touch uh, with the, with the owner of the business. So he appreciated that. And then when I talked about the story, you know, he couldn't believe, uh, you know, that we've grown so much in that amount of time. And he thought that we were very professional and he could feel, uh, the, you know, the value system, it was present. And he's like, there's no question. I'm, you know, I'm going to hire you. So again, just emphasizing, I really want you guys to understand this is that the story you tell is your differentiating factor. Remember, you know, if all you're giving customers is something to compare physically, which is usually a proposal and that's it. If you didn't touch their heart, you know, then you're, you're really not giving yourself enough of a leg up on your competition. So no matter what you're thinking, don't let your head get in the way. Don't go to your estimates thinking, they don't want to hear this, or they've probably heard this 10 times, or this isn't valuable information. Stop. Go through your process. It's almost robotic until you start getting comfortable with it. Then you start adding some creativity. Then you start flowing better. But next estimate you go to, I want you to start off with, let, would you let, start off with, start off like this. I want you to start off with, all right, so do you mind if I explain to you our preparation and our production process. 
and then just rattle off the top of your head in order how you're going to get things done on this specific project. Although it might seem self-explanatory, repetitive, don't assume that people know, okay? They're hiring you because you're an expert. So make sure you're spending no, and don't babble, please just get through it. You know, be, you know, be mindful of the temperature gauge. Okay. Nobody wants to listen to someone just babbling and babbling. If you notice that they want to say something, Hey, do you have any questions? There's some good fillers you can use. Does that make sense? Um, you know, have you seen this process done like this before? You know, so on and so forth. Okay. So, and then the second one is, you know, you could use, Hey, just curious, have you ever hired a painting company before? And then they'll say, oh, yes or no. And say, OK, well, do you mind if I tell you a little bit about our team and how, um, you know, our kind of like our on site standards? You know, yeah. So you get, you know, three painters, you know, uh, you're going to have a project manager. Chances are on this project, drop a name, you know, and the reason why I'm going to put him on this project is because he does X, Y, Z. You know, we're very cordial on site. There's no loud music. There's no cuss words. There's no smoking or whatever your standards are. OK. And then as you kind of continue the conversation, bring it into your story. You know, hey, just so you know, I, I want to know I want you I want to let you know what you would be investing in. You know, we're a young company. Um, I'm the owner of the company. My name's Tanner. You know, we're really trying to grow. We're a customer service focused company and you're not selling. You're just being honest. So don't get that feeling of, oh, maybe they're thinking that I'm overselling. You know, you're not like you need to give them evidence. You need to give them something to build a case. And although on the surface level, they may seem a little agitated with all of the information you're giving them, it's going to settle once you're through with the engagement. It'll be in their subconscious. And next thing you know, if you were to if you were to weigh the weight of what the other competition has given them in terms of value outside of just the price and yours, there's no comparison. So at that point, what we really do want, and I tell people this too, I mean, this is opposite of what you may hear, but we really want the only reason for people to not hire us be price. Okay. We don't want to be outdone in terms of trust and all the intrinsic things. Cause there's just people that, Maybe it really is a budget issue or just they, they really don't want to spend the money and, and we have to understand that and we can't get worked up by it. So, all right. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, as always, I appreciate every single one of you for the time that you put into this, listening to this. I really wanted to give you something to use today. So good luck to you. Go get it. Thanks, guys. What's up, guys? Thanks so much for listening to that awesome business breakthrough. I hope you got a lot out of it. So next up is a pro spotlight. Uh, we have Mark Bradford. He is a pro drip jobs user crushing it. Now, what's cool about Mark is that he was one of the people that was like literally on the fence. I couldn't get him to budge. I think he signed up one time and then didn't really use it, canceled and then came back and then he used it and he loves it now. So this was awesome to get him on. Uh, to share what Drip Jobs are doing for him. And uh, hopefully, if you're on the fence, maybe you can see what Drip Jobs can do for you. What's up, everyone? I'm here with Mark Bradford. Okay, first of all, let me start with this. You were one of the most skeptical people to ever use Drip Jobs. What's changed, man? Do you like it? Was it worth it? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the biggest thing is like the return on investment is like instant. As soon as you integrate it with, um, you know, the stuff that you already have in place, um, you know, I linked it with my website, uh, nice. with my get a, get a uh, request a quote button. Yeah. And it's just every email, every phone call that I get uh, for, you know, customers requesting an estimate. Uh, I just redirect them to the website and Drip Jobs yeah. takes over from there. Love it. So, yeah, it's it's uh, definitely been a game changer. Um, I'm still learning some of the aspects of it. Um you know, and I think it's, you know, it's great that there's new and updated features uh, coming in all the time. So and I'm definitely yeah. excited for the Google Calendar when that comes. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely it's, it's made Good, a huge man. difference. Good. Absolutely. So, yeah, that, that was one of the things is because you and I had spoke before and you weren't sure, if, you know, because sometimes it might feel like drip drops is too big. Right. Because I know that you kind of do your own thing. Are you still, you know, solo? Um, well, I do have a couple of full-time guys and a part-time guy. So, okay. you oh, know, cool. it's, All right. yeah, it's, um, we're definitely growing. Um, 
you know, so we want to use, you know, whatever's appropriate as we grow. And I think yeah. that grow you know, into it. Jobs, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's, there's still some features of drip jobs that I don't utilize yet, but that's just because I need to take the time to really fine tune them and tweak them. Absolutely. Um, so I still use every part of it. It's just, um, there's, there's some parts of my, my old estimating process that work in tandem. Yep. Um, you know, so eventually we'll be merging that. Um, so Great. I was, like I said, it's just, you know, it's a fine tuning. So, so you got, so a couple of things, you mentioned the booking link and I just want to make sure you know this. I know you're directing people to go to your website, but we added a button on the bottom menu. Uh, it says new request. Have you seen that on the drip jobs app? Um, that I don't know that I've seen that. No, you got to check it out. So okay. if someone calls you, you hit that button and you just punch in their phone number and it sends them the link. So you oh, don't have cool. to say, Hey, go to the website. You just hit that button, put in their phone number. And then just like that, they get the link to fill out the form. Oh, even better. Yeah. So save a step there. So you've been um, using it now for, I think two months. We reached out to you cause you're killing it. Um, just curious in terms of the, you've been sending proposals. Have people been responding to the automated messages? Um, yeah. I mean, for the most part, uh, getting onto the drip jobs, um, drips and getting to scheduling is been very quick. Um, so mo honestly, most of the responses that I've been getting through the automated, uh, responses have been like, um, just after because you send I, the proposal mostly after I send the proposal right. and, you know, um, so I I've, gotten maybe one or two where they were kind of on the fence and the automated email helped sway them over to the side. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but for the most part, it's, you know, a lot of them have been just, I go out, do the estimate, um, you know, and they want to get on the schedule within the next couple of days. So, Huge. Huge, um, man. yeah, absolutely. So, so overall, would you say, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy, you know, software can be pretty crazy. I mean, we'll, one of our focuses as a company is to like try to make it as simple as possible for you to get in, do what you need to do and get out. Do you feel as though like, you know, it's pretty easy to navigate and use? I think once you spend a good day, day and a half with it, it's yeah, you, you can jump right in as long as you're, you know, somewhat computer savvy. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it, so man. it's, yeah, it's getting, and it's getting more user-friendly. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Did uh, you notice we started putting the, uh, the lead sources there on the, yeah. the on the deal cards? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's just like being that. able to see where people come from, right? Yeah, and the customers <laughs> have been using it too. It's yeah, great. yeah. Well, yeah, we forced them to on that yeah. form. <laughs> yeah. I wondered because it just started all of a sudden. I'm like, yeah. oh, word of mouth, cool. Yeah, yeah. word of mouth, okay. and you know what? Gen generally, people are really honest on there, um, yeah. which is cool. You know, it's yeah. not like you know they just like pick whichever one. Because I'll kind yeah. of follow up, so I'm like, how'd you hear about us? Just to see if they lied. You know, yeah. it's like, all right, that matches with what you put. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I got data that I need to look at, lady. So make sure you're you're, you're correct here. Um, right. No, that's exactly. awesome, man. So just last thing, man, I always like to end with this on one of these is you were on the fence more than, like I said, anyone. I think you tried it and then you didn't use it. And then I think Mike gave you a kick in the butt. And I was like, dude, give yeah. it a try. We sat down. If you uh, could reach, if you could talk to somebody that's on the fence, maybe just doesn't have a good system or has their own system and they're thinking about drip jobs, what's one thing you would say to them, you know, uh, to, to sway them? I would say, I mean, you're not, you're not locked in, um, you know, and it, like I said before, the return on investments immediate, if you have a decent, if you can present yourself well to the customer drip jobs will do the rest. Boom. That's, that's it. You know, Love keep it, it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Mark, yeah. you're the man. Continue, continued success for you, my friend. I see that you're growing, and uh, I think it's only up from here. I appreciate your time, man. This was 100% voluntary on your part, bro, and it means a lot. Yep. You took time out of your day to do it. So thanks, man. Thanks a lot, Tanner.